look back, the spring home buying season warms up, but first time buyers could feel the pinch as inventory is at historic lows. Get this the number of starter homes dropped nearly 9% last year, according to Trulia. Joining us right now is Rogers Healy, an associate's real estate owner, Rogers Healy. Rogers, good to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me again. Okay, How are you? Okay, so obviously the the lower the number of in the homes on the market, the lower the number of inventory, the higher the price. Right. Supply and demand, simple situation. What's going on right now? Yeah, but we're seeing it, and this is the spring season. It started last week, uh, really after spring break, and. You know, it, it's it's what it's how it's been for the past few months. It's busy, but right now is is definitely the busiest time of the year, and we're seeing the highest demand with the lowest supply. So prices are also increasing um, even in the past two weeks in, in in some of the top markets. Rogers, Mitch Rochelle, New York. Um, one of the things that we're seeing up here is a lot of people, especially at the starter home level, bidding above asking price. Is that a national phenomenon that you're seeing? Yeah, they've changed some rules with mortgages where people cannot go in some places like Texas, they can't go and bring the delta between purchase price and appraised price in cash. So there's some stuff holding it back. But yeah, you do see people making bids sight unseen and obviously cash is still for the most part king. Uh, but yeah, in some situations like an entry level price point, whether it's Dallas or the Northeast or the Midwest, you'll see people bidding um, you know, 15 to 20 bids the first day without even seeing the property, maybe even without even having a FaceTime uh, tour. So yeah, it, it is it is fairly prevalent uh, all across the country. Rogers, I'm surprised um, on some of the research you were doing that uh, Miami, uh, you talk about doing really well because when when we talk about certain areas, Florida seems to be one that's been getting hit. Is that just the high end that's getting hit? I mean, when you, when, you yeah, look at, when you look at this whole pricing, because, you know, Fairfield County's getting hit, Aspen's getting hit, Miami's getting hit. It getting seems hit meaning what? With inventory or the prices are The up? prices are going down, going in, down. The, in the high end areas. Do you see that the high end's getting hit where the average price homes are going up as, as a kind of a price? price You're asking um, just from, for Miami or across the country? Both. Yeah, I mean, so a city like Miami is, is tends to be a fairly volatile city. And if you look at the indexes from, you know, the late 2000s and early 2010s, Miami, Phoenix, Vegas, those are the cities that, you know, rose the quickest and, and got killed the quickest. And I think it's because the buyer tends to be a little bit more fearful when buying something in the actual urban core that's a high rise because the thing that we don't realize with that as well, there, there comes a, there a lot of fees are associated with that. And if you're a first time home buyer, you're not going to be able to really afford it. But you know, Miami has never really been a stable real estate market, and uh, what, what I think. But what about nationally in general? I mean, what what do you tell people who are right now in the market to buy a home? How long can this discrepancy go on? That you've got a, a finite amount of inventory, and that's pushing prices up. If you're in the market for a home right now, should you wait? I mean, it's it's this is how it normally always is. Whether the market is fantastic like it is, or or if it's a little bit slower, the spring market is always busy. And we've seen the cycles hit with people renting, wanting to buy. And I think average, like millennial, rents for five years before buying. This is the time of year they do it. So this is a good time to buy and sell. Uh, if somebody wants a good deal, like if they want to actually save money, this is not a good time of year to buy. But it's not because it's 2017 and the stock market's where it's at and the economy is where it's at. It's because re residence real estate is cyclical. So think that I, I think that, I'm go, sorry? Go ahead. No, finish your thought. Yeah, go ahead. No, I, I was just saying that we, we deal with this every year, and people are always on the fence, and come March, April, they tend to either go and renew their lease or finally take the plunge and buy. So, and to go back to, to his question about high-end real estate, you know, it, it, it goes hand-in-hand hand with the economy. And I think cities, like I said, like the Phoenix, Vegas, Miamis, um, whatever, even Los Angeles, those tend to ride the wave either, either, either side of it. But Miami, the urban core of Miami, has never seen like a five-year-plus run of it just being okay. And I think that's going to continue to happen. Wow. One thing, we've been talking a lot of tax today, just to sort of merge the tax and real estate topic. One of the things that could be on the table is the, um, the home mortgage deduction. Thoughts on what would happen to the real estate market if we lost the home mortgage deduction or if it was just phased out over time? Yeah, I mean, I, I think t people are going to always freak out when something like this is introduced, and, and we've seen it, but it always is going to go back to the American dream, and I think people are always going to want to own a house. Mm. And what about the estate tax? Go, if the estate tax goes away, does that mean that people will just hold on to their homes forever and not worry about passing them on once they pass? I, 
I mean, it, it just depends, and I think that it, it, it depends what kind of articles you read and who you talk to. And if you're talking about the younger generation of, of home buyers, their objective is not necessarily to hold on to a house and make it a home. I think that they're buying a house because it's a house, and they hopefully are building some sort of equity. So there's there's two sides of, of all of this, mm. and I think that you're going to have people that have been a part of cycles before that are a little bit more weary to go and actually make a move, but the people on the other side of it that are tired of, you know, quote unquote, throwing their money away, mm -hmm. they're going to find a way to get in, whether it's in an area they want to be in or not, they're going to go and put their money something something that's tangible and they can hopefully build some equity. Yeah. Rogers, good to have you on the show today. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me. Rogers Healy joining us there.